ready? Let's go. Welcome everyone. You are now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonya on Air. I am your host, Sonya Hudson-Payne, and how do I start off each and every single show? You guessed it, I have another great show for you. Coming up in just a few short moments, I have entrepreneur and television personality, Destiny Peyton Williams. Now, if that name doesn't ring a bell, I'm sure you are tuned in every single season to the hit own television series, Love and Marriage Huntsville, which explores the relationship amongst married couples, their career, their friendships, and their family. A lot to talk about, so we're going to unpack all of those pivotal moments and their milestones. But do me a favor, before we get started with this conversation, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Sign your name is streaming across every major platform. iHeartRadio, iTunes, Pandora, Alexa, Spotify, you name it, Sonia Onoe is there. Make sure that you like it, make sure you leave a comment, and make sure that you subscribe. You can also share the content too. And also, Sonia Onoe is offering amazing advertisement space. Advertise your brand, or even if you have a major announcement. This is graduation season. It's also approaching nice weather, so I'm sure a lot of people are getting married. Put your major announcement on a billboard. Sanyo and Air is offering billboard space across 41 cities in the United States. Make sure that you email Sanya at sanyaonair.net. So let's get right into it with Destiny Peyton Williams. <laughs> so hi, Destiny. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. So wait a minute. Are you back to filming? Because I just heard the little birdie that you had to get a COVID test for the show. Maybe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go right in, why don't you? <laughs> Let me tell you why. I was talking to one of my childhood friends the other day because she saw me post that you were coming on the show. And she was like, oh my gosh, I love the show. I love her. Is she oh, wow. And I was like, I don't know. Let me, that conversation was about an hour ago. So when we heard for a little birdie, I was like, yes, so she's coming. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Yeah. I can go back and tell her, yes, Destiny will be on the next season of Love and Marriage Huntsville. I'm happy about that. I, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all still reeling from the pandemic. How has it been in Huntsville, Alabama? Because I know in New York City, we're trying to slowly and gradually get back to things. I know Atlanta has never closed. How's it going in Huntsville? I love your accent, by the way. Um, it is, you know, I just said this to Mel the other day. I was like, you know, I really think I have COVID PTSD because like, you know, being a pregnant during the pandemic and then having a baby in the right in the smack dab mid middle of it and already just being, you know, protective of a little infant and things like that. So it's like now that we go places because Alabama is like wide open, like I guess the COVID numbers are low. People are vaccinated to the wazoo. And, you know, I, I go now it's like somebody doesn't have on a mask. It's like, you know, because we have the option to to wear them or not here. So yeah. it's uh, different in other places, I, I, I'm understanding. Yeah, we have an option here too, but I'm not taking off my mask yet. I'm still looking at people kind of oddly if they cough. And even if I, I'm like, I always try to hold my cough, <laughs> which is so weird. At this point. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, and I still do that too. Like somebody starts coughing, I'm like, that's what I mean, like COVID PTSD. Like, what the heck? I, I you know, I gotta pray that, pray that off of me, Lord Jesus, because I gotta give up to this. You know, yeah. <laughs> but Lani mask. <laughs> no, we're going to talk about all of that because I see you're in your store, amazing. But let's yeah. talk about the show first because you know the goal of this platform. I want to unpack all of the pivotal moments and milestones, and people are definitely watching Love and Marriage um, Huntsville, right? Uh -huh. So what I see about reality television is it just seems as if the blueprint is a little bit different from scripted television. It oh seems God. as if they pull other cast members from current cast members, friends, or their family, which I like 
because it really reinforces, you know, strengthening your network so that you can add to your social capital. So who brought you on the show? Well, it actually happened very organically. Um, and I, people may or may not believe this, but I was actually just there at an event for the Hopes, which my husband and I um, were went to all the time. And so it was just, I don't know, This maybe it was a dress I had on, I don't know. But that particular day, like I just remember walking in, up to them and then the cameras just went whoosh. And I was just like, and they stuck a mic underneath and I was just looking like, oh, okay, I guess we, I guess we're in it. Like we're in it, like, whoa. <laughs> and, um, one of the producers from the show went out to dinner with us and I didn't even know who she was. But at that time she was just like, this is one of your friends? And it just kind of sparked from there. Wow, okay, so maybe I'm, I'm wrong in my assumption because I thought that your husband, LeBaric was on the show and then either him or Mel brought you on the show, but no, you just had on a, a popping dress and at the right place at the right time. Look at that. But, but, but because we're friends with the host, so we were in association with, you know, because they were doing events and we would go to things and, you know, we just, we're friends. So just going there to be supportive and I think that just kind of just, it organically happened. Right, right. But you know, paying it forward, I love to see people reaching out and not reaching up or down, but just reaching to the people who are by your side. If you had the power to bring a friend or family member on the show, who would that be and why? Mm, I would probably bring my life coach who has become like, I know that's weird, huh? No. She is, she is it's, we're so much alike. I like see myself in her because she's she's older than I am. And most of my really close friends are older. And so it's just interesting to to the, the dynamics of her life versus mine is kind of like parallel. So she would be somebody and she don't play. So to be my life coach. You, you gotta you gotta be able to not play, okay? <laughs> in my life, I'm like, listen, to have to be by my side as a me and my life coach and, and, and my, you know, assertive side. Right. <laughs> exactly. But you know, I think that everybody needs a life coach in their corner and especially on the show. What I love about the show is that it, it doesn't discriminate with the, the conflict. Mm -hmm. You see the women going through their things and also the men having those on point. The biggest thing about this show, you, you, this is the difference you have. Um, you know, like housewives, you see the housewives, you see their husbands sprinkled in there, but these gentlemen are very strong characters and leaders themselves. So they, they kind of like, they got their own little, we call it the Huntsville rocket. They got their own little rockets too. <laughs> like everybody gets a peach on an ATL, we get a rocket. <laughs> so, you know, what does your husband tell you when he sees you on the show in uncomfortable situations? How does he help you navigate those uncomfortable situations with the other women on the show? Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> Mind your business. No, no, no. Just yeah, I have to kind of yeah. Mm -mm, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> so, so speaking of now, I'm in trouble if I listen to him. Let's just say that. Firecracker, <laughs> <laughs> huh? Well, he had some time, you know, where he's just like, you know we have conversations about certain things that I, that I and how I handle things that could have been different, but everything's a growing, growing lesson, learning lesson. True. So, so true. So, you know, just speaking of friendships and when it's time to let it go, I was having conversations with one of my close friends. Uh, this is just an ongoing narrative amongst women of a particular age. How do you let go of a friend that you've been friends with for, for so long? Like, do you have a conversation or you just say, I can't do this anymore? you kind of moonwalk out the picture. How do you handle it? Well, I realize um, the only thing that will get me in, in a space of, of, of losing friendship will be, you know, just different levels of disrespect um, and boundaries, boundary crossing, really, which is what that ultimately is, um, which is a trigger for me and I'm learning. And so um, with that being said, like as far as like getting rid of friends, like my friends have been around for 20 plus years. So I have only let people into the circle that are close to me that I know are, they end up, they all family. Like I don't even look at them as friends, like my close knit circle, but I have a lot of people that I, I love and associate with. And um, it's just different. You just have to keep your boundaries. That's how, how you get to a space where you don't have to worry about cutting people off. 
Because if they're really your friend and you can go months and a year without talking to them and it still be the same thing. That's right. It's all good. It's all good. So I know sometimes married people have a code of ethics. And they believe that married couples should only hang around married couples. Do you and your husband subscribe to that theory or are your friends, you know, non-married individuals? Well, our relationship was long distance. So when we hung out, it was him and I most of the time. And then when we got married, it was COVID. So there was no hanging out. So I don't know, like we haven't had to experience that, but most of our close knit, I mean, he has friends that are married. I have friends that are married and single. So I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. Cause I know a lot of married couples, they're like, oh, your friend is single. Oh, she's going to encourage you to do particular things. So, you know, most men don't want that's not always the case. Like, come on now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so true. But speaking of friendships and, and circling back to the show, we all know that you are close friends with Melody Holt. And we've seen her going through a lot of conflict um, with Martel Holt, um, with the mistress and, and the baby. How is she doing? And I'm not asking because we're just trying to put gossip on the show. Viewers like me are really invested in the show and the strong women. So you're actually a fan, and I didn't know this. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, since episode one, season one, I'm tuned in every single week. We, Love that. We become invested in the characters, especially, you know, boss women want to see other boss women be okay. So from one boss babe to another, how is she doing? And I don't want to hear, you know, she's okay because we always put on a mask. We want the truth. How is she doing? I think she's doing great under the circumstances. And that's real talk. Like, you know, she's a strong woman and I think she's doing great. Good, good. I, I like that. And I, I'm, I'm glad to know that her friends are still sticking by her. What do you do or how do you show up to her as a friend when she needs you the most? And I ask this question because some people don't even know how to show up to friends. And I want to make sure that we're giving women examples of not only talking about it, but demonstrating how you show up for a friend. So how do you show up for Melody? Um, in a capacity that she's comfortable with, you know? You have to learn, and I, I keep going back to that because I experienced some heavy, heavy, heavy levels of no boundaries. So just whatever, you know, whatever the situation needs in the moment, if it's just a conversation, if it's just the event session, if it's just, let's go get something to, to eat or whatever it is in the moment. You know, there's different levels to, to how you can be there for somebody. Yeah, yeah. You know, really from this this pandemic and, you know, everyone just has another layer of PTSD. It just seems as if morals and ethics and girl code is lost. And I just want to make sure that I'm having conversations with, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to have conversations with other women because I just want to challenge it's them. A problem, but it's they, real. Could be some hot tea you just tried to drop on me, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that we are showing up for each other. It is so so important. So you know, how's your relationship with Kimmy as well on the show? Stay tuned. Oh, <laughs> and we will stay tuned because, like I said, we are loyal fans of the show. What I liked about the dynamics between you and Kimmy. I know you had made a comment referencing, well, she had made a comment referencing chicken, you know, with your husband. I liked how you two, even though there was conflict, you still talked through it. You still mm -hmm. talked through it. You talked about your boundaries. You talked about your intentions. I love to see the discussions happen amongst women as opposed to, you know, the name calling and the fisticuffs. We don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, you know, once again, I'm glad that you are mentioning Melody Holt and also Kimmy and you showing up as another woman for two women. Listen, so that's one thing, one thing that I have always been a big proponent for is women coming together because there's so much power in that. And that is, I mean, you know, I always equate it back to, you know, I loved history and study, study different, you know, things of different, di different phases of, um, you know, the centuries. But one of the things about women that's consistent is when they get together, they end up becoming something negative. Oh, they're witches or they're this or that, that, because there's real power in womanhood. You know, I look at, you know, the tribe, um, I think it was, what is it? Is it not, it's not Evo, but whatever tribe it was, they survived for centuries with the women as the head. 
as the warriors. And because that's what we are naturally. And I think that just us together, it's, it's just so much power, just to sum yeah. it up. So much power. You know, I, that's a perfect segue, just talking about women who traditionally were always the leaders. So let's just talk about marriage because it is so uncanny for today's modern woman to kind of see herself as a white. We don't see images like this too often where a black man and a black woman will get married, right? So talk about that a little bit more in your household growing up. Were you living in a household with two parents involved? Uh, absolutely not. My father actually raised me. So I was in a very unconventional household. So my dad raised me by himself. And so, yeah, no, I didn't see that at all. <laughs> and he never married. So. so where did you get those valuable lessons from so that you could show up as a wife to your husband? Well, the, what I always wanted to do was um, break generational habits. And that was why my, my thought process was a lot more broad than what I had experienced. So, and just, you know, I actually was that girl that didn't even think about marriage. Like I was enjoying the single life, you know, <laughs> working, traveling, living in, living in whatever city I want to pick up and move to. And, you know, for the moment, God showed me that this is what I needed to experience. So, um, yeah, that's what I say to people. Like, if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's not. There's no judgment. Because, you know, most married folks or even, you know, some people in general feel that it's unnatural for a woman to not believe in, in matrimony. And I'm just going to not believe in relationships. But as far as like. I, I can't remember myself like looking at wedding dresses and like wanting to be until I got older because it was always like I wanted to sing, I wanted to act, I want to live here, I want to do this, I want to do that. And you know, I definitely want to have kids. Like that was one of the biggest goals I ever had. Like that was my biggest goal in life. But it's weird because I guess the, the way that our generation was brought up and exposed, it was like, we got to get it. It's a different generation than our grandmothers. And even though my grandmother was, and this is my example, she was a single woman and she was an entrepreneur of my whole life. Um, she had her own business. So I just saw different things. And so I guess that that's what placed in, as I'm saying this to you, I'm realizing kind of sparked who I am. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I said, oh, okay. So she had exposure to an entrepreneur through her grandmother. Cause I always want to know. know. I didn't even realize it. Yeah, yeah you people People never realize how there's so much from their past that kind of triggers their 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 present and their future, and they she's step into long and you know, bigger mind. And I am her granddaughter for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's why my company is named after her. I was gonna ask you where that name came from. I love it. Paying respect yeah. to your grandmother. Yes, wow. my grandmother and my father. Their names together. Oh, nice, nice. So as a new mom a new wife what lessons have you learned being a new mother and a new wife i don't think we have time <laughs> give, give me one give me give me one bad thing that you learned about yourself one bad thing that i learned about myself oh this is really good um my delivery mm. my delivery it's kind um, of Apparently it is. I'm like that. I thought through the process and, you know, mold that over and thought it was a little less than what I was really thinking. But sometimes, it, you know, everybody can't take me. And I realized that. Yeah. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> that was some shame, Miss Daniel. Oh, that was some shame. I would say, wait, in my head, I'm like, well, maybe she's a Leo because I'm a Leo too. And dog. Oh, of course. Oh, you're you're bull. Okay. And yeah, so I, and I always tell people, if you watch me, I have I am I am no middle ground. So it's wanna have fun. Oh, you know, we joking, just good time, high spirited, and then like a bull. If you watch them in their nature, they're just cool. You know, they they just roam around, do their thing, and then when you make them see red, it's a whole nother beast. <laughs> so yeah, I am a true bull. True. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give you some advice, what I've learned is to kind of pause and take- Oh no, I got that. The power of pause. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see, keep watching, you'll see. 
<laughs> because but power of pause, baby. Yes. I'm straight, no chaser, you know, even to spend an hour around me, you might eat a Motrin before, a Motrin afterwards. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. I'm just fun. But when you poke me the wrong way, but that's yeah. also my responsibility too. I, and that's something that I'm coming to learn. It's my responsibility to get in front of my trigger so that I don't allow the poking to be. Now I, I went, I used to be zero to a thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> now I'm like zero to a hundred. I'll simmer and like be a thousand on the inside. Yeah. Power calls. Yeah. And come I back. Think, I think motherhood does that for you. It, it, it calms you down because you're like, listen, I got to go back home to this baby. I really don't have time for this nonsense. How old is the I'm baby? Like, be good when I get to him, you yeah. know? How old is he now? He is 11 months. Oh, my little. <laughs> yeah. He's 11 months and walking. Really? Started walking. Look, you know, I'm that mom. Like, okay, checklist. Okay, what is he doing? Is he walking? Okay, we got an hour of that. Okay, we're gonna walk. So, um, ten months. He started walking. Oh my gosh! See, you're at the other end of the spectrum. You have a new, a new baby. My daughter is 25 years old. So I'm yes, I am done <laughs> with all of you that. know. It's funny because. I, I have, like I said, I have friends that are older and they have, you know, grown children. So I've been through the process with a lot of them where they're like, oh my God, they're leaving. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? And they can't even say her name, the daughter's name without crying. And so I was like, oh my God, am I going to go through this? <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. I'm past that. Let me tell you something, Destiny. I was that mom when she was in junior high school, I would leave work. And I would go to her school's playground and I would be hiding behind the tree. Just <laughs> <laughs> Make sure she was okay. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it now. I'm trying my best to work on it now because I've seen yeah. what that type of smothering can do. So I'm like, let me get work on myself. <laughs> Not that, not that I was calling you a smother, but I'm just saying right. you go through phases. But you know, you like you said, you now you're like she 25 by, yeah. but some people don't ever get to that point where they're like, I don't want them to leave, you know. So you know, you got to push them out of the nest and let them have their life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, even when I was pregnant with her, like I prayed to God. I said, God, please don't make me have a boy. I would not know what to do with the boy. So I encouraged. I'd have given to you would have, because you know, I thought I was having a girl. If you look at our ba our gender reveal. He, everybody wore white That's he right. wore blue and I wore pink. And so, because really I, at first when I saw the, when I saw the ultrasound, I was like, oh, that's a boy's head. That's a boy for sure. <laughs> and then I was so sick. So I was like, you know, the old, the old, old wives tell us that, you know, when you're sick like that, you're having a girl. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm having a girl. But then I didn't think about it when I ate steak, which I don't even eat beef. Oh. Or things that were like hearty and heavy. I wasn't as sick. So mm -hmm. I, I was having a boy. I should have known. All the signs were there. All of them were there. And then I'm like, when the, the, the little lights came on, I'm like, wow. But oh my God, he is everything. He is everything. I'm sure they want to have more. I don't. <laughs> Listen, it took five, six tries to get to this one. So I. Okay, I hear you. So I know you're going to love or want him 24 7. Oh, he's going to be oh, nice. You go right ahead. But you know, having a boy is difficult. And let me just tell you why I didn't want to have a boy. Living in America during these times for black boys, it is in black men, it is very, very dangerous. And I knew that I would have just added another layer of PTSD. Have you and your husband talked about when will you have the conversation with your son about protecting him and making sure that he comes home every single night? Have you even thought about that far? Um, I think about it, and, but I don't, I don't harbor in it because I'm a big person in manifesting your life and what you focus on is what you get. So of course the conversation with, as soon as he can understand that things are a little bit different, um, and how you move in this world. And that's just being of color period. So, um, those lessons, as soon as he can understand, he'll be taught. Gotcha. Gotcha. Let's talk about marriage a little bit more, you know? Okay. <laughs> People need to hear these things. There are so many women who are not married and they're just like, okay, what do I do? What do I look for? And I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm newly wed. You can tell me this. What are your deal breakers in marriage? 
Um, it's funny because I had this conversation with someone and there I was just like, I don't ever want a man to think that they have a past with me, but cheating and how you do it is it's not a deal breaker to me. I know that may sound whatever, but uh, I grew up around men and I know how they move. And I know my grandfather was one of my best friends too. And so like just certain things, like I, I learned the game directly from men. So a lot of the ways I move is like that, which is probably in a relationship with another man a lot of times, but you know, working on it. So uh, <laughs> with that being said, it's just, I just think differently when it comes to aspects. Everybody always says that I was probably a man in my former life. I don't know. Me too. I don't know. Me too. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I had a lot of parts. <laughs> I was looking at a show the other day and they asked, um, some men the same question because they're like, oh, if a, a man cheats, all he has to do is apologize. And, you know, more, well, more than likely- Apology to change behavior. Right. An apology to me. Exactly. You don't need to just say, oh, baby, hey, I'm sorry. Nah. <laughs> and now and this, where's the sobbing, where are the flowers? You're going to have to go through the a period of court and wooing me again, boo. It ain't just coming back and you just think because, mm -mm. nope, you got work to do. So I, I can I just- assume that yes you've been cheated on but you worked through it so that you two can stay together um i always say this because in relationships it was always certain like i would say think like a man you go through long this long long-term relationships sometimes you have breaks you have different things and some people may think if you talk to someone else in that break time that you may have cheated. and some people don't think that way and so for me, I would say in relationships, I can't say that. I mean, from high school, I had my first boyfriend cheated. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't know. That was my first heartbreak. So after that, I remember my dad looking at me and saying, you better get over that shit. <laughs> well, okay. And then now it's like, you did what? Oh yeah. You know, so my healing process is different. I, I was taught to be tough about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But do you think it's inevitable? that every woman who gets involved in a relationship will somewhere get cheated on. Do you if think, I think that, then that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna attract. So no, I can't say that. Mm, gotcha. gotcha. It just depends on the level the mindset of the man, age, experiences, things like that. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also what your agreement is in your relationship as to what constitutes as cheating. There's just so many levels to it. So yeah. I don't really have a, a solid answer for that. I think that's why communication is so important because what you may, you know, answer the question, I may answer it differently. It just goes from an individual by an individual. Maybe. Yeah, you know, but I just yeah. want to make sure that couples are having these uncomfortable conversations because people just want to kind of pull it quits too soon. Without I, but I love how you and your husband met. It was just like such a romantic story. Was it what story do you have? Okay, let me tell you what, what I what I researched. That you went to a party, I believe it was in Alabama. <laughs> and you two, I'm such an actress, you two saw each other from across the room and your eyes locked. <laughs> and you fell in love. You okay, fell in love yeah. long distance. So proper, like, but, <laughs> yeah, it was that moment. It was like that. It was I like love it. So, you know, from the South, this is where I learned the word courting from, because I have family that lives in Pensacola, Florida. I've been all through Alabama. It's not that far from where my family is in, in Florida. But I learned the word courting. We don't hear that word a lot here in New York City. How did your husband court you so that you really fell head over heels so that when he proposed, you said yes? How did he court you? Oh, I would say... He definitely was a person that always, because we had a long distance relationship majority of the time, that always made sure we went on dates. Um, nice jewelry. Um, cooking for me. Like, I gained 25 pounds. Like, all that stuff, you know. Um, just being like a Southern gentleman. Yeah. So, do you think that men, I mean, women should also court men? Do you think that it should be some form of reciprocity as well? When you get to a certain point, like, you know, for me, it's, it's hard for me to go shopping and see so, and, and not want to get something for my significant other. Like those type of things. Like I'm I'm a, I like to be spoiled and but I also spoil. Got you. Got you. Now, let's talk about this amazing store. 
I love I'm trying to look in the background. We've been watching it on the show. Now, what I loved about your career journey, you didn't start off in the beauty industry. You were in real estate, is that correct? Mm -hmm. I am now actually licensed here in Alabama. So um, yes, thank you, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I'm now licensed here, but yeah, I started in real estate. I started in um, actually in the leasing community. And then I was just like, okay, you know, the way that I encountered, you know, getting somebody an apartment, like was just, it was interesting, it was an interesting journey. I remember one lady, uh, this is made, what made me really passionate about real estate outside of the money. Hello. Um, was she came in and she could tell that she was, she had been physically abused and she was going, she had just left that relationship. And we, like, I just felt the energy from her. Like you could tell like she had a, a black eye, like it was just, and we cried together when she got approved. And like when I walked her through her new town home and it was just, I was just like, oh my God, like this is getting someone a home, you know, moving moving on in different phases and facets of your life. Like being a part of that was something that was a little bit deeper than just the coins. Right. So um, yes, yeah, so I started doing that. And then I went into, if I can do this with a, with a town home, I rented town homes. Um, what can I do with buy, you know somebody buying their first home and all those things? So that's how I got into real estate. But then you know people always think that whatever career you start off in, that's the same career that you are going to die in. And I always encourage people to diversify their portfolio, do Absolutely. more than one thing. So when did you decide that you wanted to add the beauty industry to your portfolio? The weird thing about it is when I was a little girl, I used to dream of having um, like a beauty salon and, and a barbershop connected. And I always, that was one of the things that I always used to visualize. And it's so crazy how I talk about manifesting because when you really learn what it is, you understand the habits. And so just as a little girl, I used to think that. And so I went off and, you know, got a degree in international business, just different things, still was acting and singing because that's my first love is singing and um went from that to i've always doubled uh, uh doubled and dabbled in, in a few things but when i actually got into beauty was by i was a flight attendant nobody knows that yeah i was a flight attendant and i ended up becoming a partner with one of the girls that i flew with with a beauty product and that just kind of sparked back the memory of me wanting to be you know, have this this space and like have uh, make people feel beautiful inside and out and all that. So um, in that process, we had a, a provisional patent on a product and we're shopping it around Atlanta because that's where I was living at the time. And I just started realizing that there was a lack of uh, ownership for black black people, period, in the beauty industry and learning how much money we spent. And that was seven years ago uh, or longer. And just to see that and, and see that there was a void when I started really be learning how to save and like not spending the money that I invest in my business at, at Nordstrom's. Okay. Um, so I went through investing that into something that is bigger than me, which is sparking people to want to open up more stores to franchise with Madani. Hello. And, or, um, you know, just be owners in things period. And that's that's where we need to take our power back. And we're, we're doing a good job of keeping that going, but we need to amp it up next levels. Now, what you just told us, you know, it was so many things going on in there. I just want to kind of unpack um, two things. So, you know, you did your research, but then what I also learned is that when you were trying to open, there were so many vendors who didn't even want to work with you or sell to you because it was sort of like the old boys club and you had to break through the glass ceiling. How did you break through the glass ceiling of the old boys club so that you could have vendors work with you? Um, that's just being the bull and, and being in sales for a while um, and just learning how to maneuver in those spaces. I was telling someone um, that it's, it's so ironic how conversations go together who's was now working like three jobs and one of the jobs is uh, serving. And I used to be in that industry as well when I was in college. And it's like, you just, but that is a part of the journey of just learning different levels, how to be around different types of people, cultures, um, when you're in environments where you're exposed to not just what your surrounding area looks like. So it just helps you grow as a person and be, to be able to navigate through um, all facets. 
And to tie into what you were asking me specifically, I forgot. <laughs> How did you get the vendors on board? So I, I wanted to work for it. Okay, yeah. And just being able to move in different spaces with different types of people. Um, that's how it tied in together. And that's just really it. Life lessons and using them in, in business. And then you talked about the money, you know, getting the funding for your business. I also researched that you didn't even apply for a business loan because you didn't want to owe anyone any money. But we always know, you know, that having credit is good. So would you advise people to keep their jobs, save their money, pour it into your entrepreneurial effort, efforts, or would you advise them to seek a bank loan? Like, which option would you prefer? Um, it is... I really can't tell anybody their journey. I can tell. I can say what worked for me um, was hustling and investing the money that I made, the residual income or additional income outside of just surviving and living the lifestyle that I wanted to live. Minus the shopping, I had to give up the big label, you know, big ticket shopping um, for a while to just focus on putting that investment into my company so that I I could build my my entity and my entity could get bank loans versus me the person. So that's just another level to business. Um, once you get into it, you kind of understand you don't want that personal debt on you. You'd rather have it on your business. So, um, you know, I had to, you know, put time, my own money and time and, and, and working really hard in my corporate job to put into my business in order to grow the brand, in order to get the, the business loans in that name. So, yeah. So you're still doing real estate. You mm -hmm. have, what is it, Madani? Madonna Beauty. Madonna Beauty. New wife, new mother. How are you managing it all? Who said I was? What? <laughs> I'm just taking it day by day. <laughs> you know, that's what I've been telling people lately. You know, there's just so much going on in the world. And they're like, Sonia, how are you managing? And I said, honestly, it's just an hour by hour, day by day thing. Like I can't, I can't even think beyond that. I just need to manage. And you know what I realized that I am such a proactive thinker that I'm working on that because that puts you ahead of where God wants you to be sometimes. And then you have to learn to let bounce back. So you yeah. get spaces you're supposed to be in, so you can get there. Yeah. So um, that's another thing that I'm learning about myself, and mm -hmm. um, you know, just being such a proactive thinker and you know the chess player and. You know, I just want to sit back and let God lead, you know. Yeah. It's so much stress in doing that and wanting to be in control of everything. You can't. Want to be in control of everything. <laughs> That's the thing I'm working on. Um, <laughs> and just letting God be, you know, be your God. And, and yeah. I people think that, you know, I'm being preachy sometimes, but it's just real. Oh, no, and I love conversations like that, you know, and I just want to, you know, spill this type of energy to all of my viewers and my right, listeners. Right. Hold on one second. No problem. Me and my three phones. <laughs> I'm glad you could stand up because you don't want to see what's going on uh, on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you put my foot in the camera? Lord Jesus, why I suck in my stomach in? Let me suck it in, girl. <laughs> no, because I just have on shorts here. <laughs> <laughs> At least you have on shorts because if I didn't have, to, if I wasn't in the store, then I wouldn't have probably had on the bottoms either. No judgment. <laughs> from, from the waist up, okay? <laughs> but we, we talked about, you know, just you wearing and managing all of these different hats but you're also paying it forward with your what is it called your your madani beauty you have classes that teach other women how to enter into the beauty industry so that they can open up their own franchise as well Talk yes i'm that. actually launching two different classes um one of the the first things that you have to get together in the process of getting in, into business or being an entrepreneur is your mindset that's everything so my first phase of it is mindset. And then the second phase will be when you're ready, let's move forward. Right. Um, to, or some people that are in that mind space and you know, you know, by your assessments and consultations, which I'm doing as well, um, where they are mm -hmm. and want to help them be set up for success. So if it's like, hey, we need to work on the mindset or, hey, we need to jump straight in, straight into business. Do you have this, this and this? If not, let me help you get these things. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's a it's a it's a unlock your destiny course because there's so many doors to your destiny that um i can help you unlock so that's I like what i'm words and I, and I like that you mentioned that because in this new age of social media that is driving everyone's actions we see so many entrepreneurs every single day emerging and once again they may not understand that it's a mindset 
first before the execution. And people, you know, I, I like it's not the faint of hearts. It's not at it's all. Not. <laughs> at all. Okay, I worked in the corporate world, and I did both at the at the same time. And the corporate world ain't for the faint of hearts either. When you get up to the higher levels, which is where I was, yeah. But it prepared me for this. Yes, 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 yes. So managing all of that, and I know you know you said your son is eleven months. Do you have any mom guilt? Um, no, I don't because I really have. I have my moments where it's like I want him to see things and see how I'm moving, and then I have my moments where it's just me and him, and it's just mommy and, and law, and we just have our good time and connect and learn and all that. So, um, no, I, I, I experience a little bit of it every now and again, but I guess, and somebody told me that just be prepared for that not to go away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it never goes over. I did for a while. I will say this during the pandemic, it was like, oh my God, like I want him to be out. I want him to experience things. I want to not just feel like I gotta be in this house and this bubble and like never in a mat and in a million years that I think that I would start a business and, and, and be a new wife and have a baby and then a pandemic hits and that's already a lot. Yeah. And like, you know, so I just I'm grateful to God that I am still sane. <laughs> And then, you know, to um, now be able to have the balance of going to the park and like doing things. So, yeah, but I went through a phase like, oh my God, like I feel like I want to do things. So it was, that was my first bout of guilt. Got it, got it. Now back to these, these classes, are they uh, being offered in person or virtually? Because I know there are so many people who want to register and participate. So they're going to be virtual, um, and, and a lot of them. Uh, then we also have some pre-recorded. So we have the pre pre-recorded course, which is the the initial phase, and then we have um, consultations that will be attached to that, and then we'll have our one-on-one -on -one course as well. So yeah, we have different levels, um, and it's just different levels for where you are. Got it. And then you mentioned a while ago that people can join you and franchise. Beauty, is that correct? We will be doing that. Too. We're 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 actually looking at um, our second location first, and then that will be the next phase of me just teaching people how to do it, and then um, we'll go into the franchise. So that's the whole process of the mindset. Let me show you how to set up your business, and then if you decide that with this business you want to go into the beauty industry, let Madani help you do that. Why not? This is a multi-billion-dollar industry that we need to start any more control of because last time I ran the numbers I think that we were only involved in three percent of the beauty industry and that is very up a little bit but not much not much I know it's not over 10 no and, and, I know we're not yet at all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and we are the largest consumers you know but yet and still we don't control the equity you know so I'm glad that that you mentioned that Let's get you know back to the show a little bit because we do have to wrap up this conversation. So when can we expect the new season now that you're in filming? Yeah, I got that out. Oh, uh, I really don't know. I would say um, fall maybe. I don't know. I don't have a tentative. I don't even have a tentative day. So yeah. Got it. Got it. How long are your your filming days? I know that can be very very long. It just depends. It depends on what um, is is needed for the day or what people have going on for the day. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that's so funny. Um, production says, like, y'all got real lives. Like, y'all are real business owners and y'all got, like, crazy schedules. And, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to, like, get us all wrangled together. Right. Um, they really are, like, working. We out here hustling. <laughs> and so um, that's one of the things I love about the show is because it's like you have real true entrepreneurs that are in the grind. Yes. Um, and living life at the same time. And, you know, you get to see so many, so many facets. I think even though we have, you know, the moments, um, the premise of the show and what it began and what it's showing can be and yeah. how businesses have um you know been developed gr grown and went through ups and downs all those things um mm -hmm. i think it's a great thing for people to see yeah it is and you do all have lives i know there was one episode particular i was watching i think it was last season and you had a conversation about the business but you were holding your son in the <laughs> And I said, you better bring your child to work, Miss Honey. <laughs> Absolutely. I've had to do that a couple times, okay? 
and and in the stroller and I'm behind the register. I had to do that a few times. Like, you know, and you know, it's funny because if you go to and no shade, but if you go to Asian establishments, they have their kids there with the, them all the time. Yeah. And so, you know, but sometimes we get a stigma. Oh, she got a baby work with her. Well, why did you think I became an entrepreneur? So I could. Hello? Let me tell you a funny story. This happened just last week. So in New York City, if you're at a red light, oftentimes there'll people walking up to your car selling fruit water and there was a woman selling mangoes but she mangoes. was breastfeeding at the same time so she came to my my car door with the mango but all i saw was her, her titty and her nipple and the baby and i was like uh i know we're gonna bring out thing. I, I breastfeed so i feel like kudos to her because we need to normalize what we've over sexualized i get it but but at a red light at a car but I mean, I'm saying her baby was hungry and she still had to make her money. <laughs> I did take the mango. And I was yeah, like, look, I know that mango was good too. <laughs> you know, a hard working woman that's breastfeeding and selling mangoes in the hot sun, you know that fruit. She picked it with some love, okay? That's mango I've had in my life. <laughs> she picked that mango with some love, okay? <laughs> What? It's just balance. It's just balance, you know. And you know, I've been in the middle of the photo shoot. Like, hey, wait a minute, they filling up. One second, that means he's ready to eat. It never ends. I always keep my phone right here next to me because I'm still a mom. And if my daughter calls, I'm going to pick up the phone. So <laughs> it never stops. Period. It Period. Never stops. Period. Period. But you know. One storyline that we are interested in seeing on the show, and you know, I'm hopefully, hopefully, you can tell us, which I'm sure you will. Will we see the divorce of Melody and Martel and the recent engagement to his mistress and baby mother? I'm sorry, what? Will we see the recent engagement to his mistress and child's mother? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Uh, no comment. <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> so I'm glad that the show will be returning sometime in the fall. We're just going to cross our fingers because a lot of people are anticipating that. And you talked about your your academy. Um, people. I become, true, I'm just saying, let me just clarify. I don't think that's true. But anyway, no comment. <laughs> the word on the street. It's the word on the street that he's now engaged to this other woman and like i said we're all rooting for melody we just want to make sure that she's okay like we got her back we really really do in the virtual world but tell my viewers and my listeners how they can stay connected to you in case they want to you know register for your courses or become a franchise owner give us your social media handles and your website so my website is www.madonnybeauty.com. Um, also, I am re, uh, relaunching destinypaytonwilliams.com as well. So you can find me, and you also can find me at my social media handle, um, destiny.madonnybeauty and Destiny Peyton Williams. So we're kind of, it's two entities, but we're doing two different things at the same time. So just to, to clarify that, destiny.madonnybeauty um, for now. <laughs> got it, got it. This has been a great conversation. I love talking to women who are movers and shakers, who are paying it forward and, you know, showing other people, other women, how to do it successfully. Continued success to you. Blessings to your little bundle of joy. And we will be tuned in to the upcoming season of Love and Marriage Principle. Destiny, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Have a good afternoon. You too. Bye-bye. What an amazing conversation with Destiny. I love that we were able to unpack many of her pivotal moments and milestones, not only in her career, but let's just talk about the career for just a brief moment. How you can start one place, but it doesn't mean that you are going to land and stay in that place. She started off in corporate America. She added real estate to her portfolio, and now she added beauty. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Sonia On Air. I had such an amazing time talking to Destiny Peyton Williams of OWN TV's Love and Marriage Huntsville. Let me tell you why this conversation was so important because there are 
a lot of things that resonated and landed with me. Let's just talk about diversifying your portfolio career-wise. Where you start doesn't necessarily mean that is where you are going to land or end up. She started off in corporate America, added real estate, and now she's adding the beauty industry, which is so, so important in this climate. African-American women are the largest consumers of beauty products. And yet and still, we don't hold any high stakes equity in the business. So when I speak to women, black women who are forming their own beauty empires and also showing other women of color how to start their own empires and be successful. The reciprocity for me, it just gives me encouragement. It makes me smile at my people. So kudos to her for doing that. Also just navigating relationships. The codes are not existent. I'm telling you the blueprint about morals, ethics, is really going out the window. So, you know, I'm glad that we, we spoke about what our codes are so that you maybe you want to have a conversation with your friends this evening, this afternoon, tomorrow morning, just about communicating your codes, your boundaries, your structure, so that everyone can coexist in such a positive way because there's just too much negativity. There's too many people fighting. There's too many people not willing to communicate and unpack what went wrong. Um, and then they, they take that baggage into the next relationship or friendship. And then that one just falls by the wayside. Communicate your boundaries and your structure. We also talked about marriages. Now, we also find that the definition of family has changed to no longer be monolithic. You can talk to five different people and the definition of family will probably change about three or four times. So once again, I wanted to have the conversation with Destiny so that I can hear how she defines family. Cause you know, sometimes when people get married, you know, they always tell other single folks, oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. And I was just so pleased and happy to know that, you know, she's open and she doesn't feel as if, you know, it is kind of unnatural for women to think that, you know, oh, I don't need a man. Well, not that I don't need a man, but I don't want to be married. It's okay. You know, you can still be in a relationship and not be married. That is such a controversial topic that so many people have. You know, people believe that you were put on this earth to be married. How can we can we talk about successful relationships first before we start jumping into marriage? We need to get that down packed first. So kudos to you, Destiny, once again for engaging with Sonya on air and my listeners and my viewers. Do me a favor, um, make sure that you subscribe to Sonya on air. It is streaming across just about every major platform. Um, if you're watching this interview on YouTube, I'm going to have the links in the description section of this video. Make sure that you leave a comment, make sure that you like it, make sure that you share and make sure that you subscribe. Also Sonya on air has amazing advertisement space. Not only advertisement space, but if you just want to announce to the world, listen, I'm graduating. I'm getting a divorce. Um, I'm getting married. I have a new business that I'm opening up. I'm moving. I just bought a house. If you want to advertise, or if you just want to toot your own home, make sure that you contact me. I have amazing billboards in 41 cities across the United States. All you have to do is email Sonia at SonyaOnAir.net, and I will give you the different packages, and you can select one. And let Sonia on air take your advertising needs or your bragging needs <laughs> and make it official. I just want to take some time out now before I close out this edition of Sonia on air to dedicate this show to three of my friends that I recently lost within the last three weeks. This Sonia on air episode is dedicated to my friends Malika, C. Otis, and Joanna. May you rest in power. I love you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been another amazing edition of Sign You On Air. Smooches, dolls.